Hey, how's it going, everybody? Big Dance Action. I'm Scott Spritzer. He's Doug Upstone. We are DocSports.com. We're talking some Saturday action in the West region. It's Ohio taking on Virginia. Wanted to talk about this one with you, Doug, because we've got one of the sexy or popular dogs in this one because the Ohio Bobcats opened a 10 and a half point underdog to Virginia. As we speak, the line is down a full three points. Ohio's getting seven and a half at this point. Over 90% of the money on this game in the books that I checked with, it's on Ohio. Uh, almost <laughs> 95% in one book. Uh, so the money's all over the MAC entry, and that might be the key phrase in the final handicap of this one, MAC entry, because at least for me, betting on the MAC in the big dance in the past has not helped my bankroll. No, I mean, they, they've been horrible just across the board. And it's been, you know, it hasn't been like the last two or three years. I mean, it's it's been quite a significant amount of time now. And so that's that's a definite concern. Now, you know, it seems like this Ohio team is at least a little bit different. You know, they're, com they're coming in. They, they won the MAC. They went 9-1 and one, uh, straight up and against a spread. You know, really a good run. And if you look at Virginia's last 11 games, they're only 3-7-1 against the number. Um, one thing, though, that tried to break this ga uh, game down systematically, and the total is at 131, okay? And the so that would mean, you know, you could go into half points, but we'll just, for the sake of argument, we'll just keep it at this. That would mean the Cavaliers would win roughly 69 to 62, okay? So, like, we're off by a half point on that one. This year, though, Ohio U, when they don't reach their scoring average of 80 points, they're only 4 and 7 against the spread. Given what this total is, Scott, the Bobcats getting anywhere close to their number of 80 is about the same as an Instagram model reaching out to me, okay? It doesn't look like it's going to happen. So to me, the real key to this game is <laughs> what happens when Ohio U get, goes down court three straight trips, they fail to score each time. Do they remain? Do they retain their composure? Do they score the next time, or do they get frustrated and that those empty trips turn into six or seven? So I think that's really what comes down to the key. Again, the, as I said, the MAC is notoriously weak, but you know the Wahoos. To me, this team is shaky. I'll I'll say Ohio U, but I would definitely not go below seven and a half. What about well, you? Scott? You have to confirm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I said, I said, go, go ahead, take it out, take the, take the, oh, okay. uh, take the horse to the barn. Here we go. You got it. I was going to say the concern from a lot of people that I've heard this week is that Virginia won't be able to land in Bloomington for this game until Friday, about 24 hours before game time. I, I, I think that doesn't matter at all. The travel part. I mean, I'm not sure it's a big deal. I mean, these teams, you know, throughout the course of the season, they never arrive in the city they're playing until 24 hours before game time. That doesn't even factor into my equation when it comes to handicapping at all. Not even half of 1% of my handicapping is concerned about when they're landing in Bloomington. 24 hours before game time is plenty. The, the concern is, have they been able to practice like normal during the course of the week with the COVID issues? That's where the concern is, not when they're traveling, but have they been able to practice? And the tough part is, is there's been very little information released on whether Virginia's players are practicing, whether some key players have been sitting on the sideline as they get ready to make that trip. Listen, if everything is as it should be, well, we know the Bobcats, they own great offensive metrics. They shoot the three well. They're deadly accurate with two points, uh, two point field goal shooting, but their non-conference strength of schedule was 191st. And they're you know bad defending the two against some not so hot teams. Meanwhile, Virginia, excellent on both ends of the floor. Uh, they are in a top 55 situation when it comes to strength of schedule, if you care about that. Uh, Virginia, listen, I power rated them 11 points better than the Ohio Bobcats. I have to decide if Virginia is going to be able to, you know, come into this game, not so much with a travel problem, but with the ability to practice at the level they need to practice to get ready for this game. Having said that, Boy, I'm just going to be that guy who says that the power rating of the ACC and Virginia, uh, the lack of what we've seen from the MAC in the past, leads me to lean towards Virginia. I am going to say this. This will not be a premium play for me at DocSports.com. It's a lean because books don't make that big of a mistake, at least for my, you know, for my sake, uh, to see a line move three, three and a half points in that direction towards Ohio. So, again, listen – if you like Ohio, and I'm talking to the people that are watching, more power to you. If you like Virginia, more power to you. I think this game is going to be that close. 
to the numbers. So a lean for me on Virginia, a lean for Doug Upstone on the Ohio Bobcats. Check out our plays all weekend long. And by the way, I've got a great college basketball season, but we are also both red hot in the NBA that started before the All-Star break and continues as we cut these videos. Check out our daily videos each and every day of the week. We're talking college basketball right through this opening week of the Big Dance. You can see those every single day. In fact, I got one up for uh, Thursday's play-in games or first four games as we speak. For Doug Upstone, I'm Scott Spritzer. Check out that free $60 account. Click on the link at the bottom of the screen uh, to get started. And let's put them in the win column this opening weekend of the Big Dance.